it's exciting for the kids just because we keep preaching, you know, and there's signs downstairs that like prove us right and the way that we do things and to get into this point where it's actually like, hey, we're here. We talked about this when we first went in the door. It's going to be really hard, you know, if you if you can stick through it and you can just keep developing and doing things the right way, you have a chance to to be in a championship game. And just that part of it's pretty cool because like when we stepped out in the field, I think it was like on Sunday, and then we practiced, you know, Tuesday and today. It was, you know, there's there's some juice about them, you know, so you can tell that you know they're 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 ready to go. Todd, what did you what did you guys think that y'all that you really liked first time around? In terms of, of how you oh, either controlling uh, Kyler or bottling him nah, up. well, containment. There, I think the turnovers were important. Didn't like the way we started. I think we were a little bit in shock of, you know, kind of, you know, sitting there in that kind of environment and that those type of athletes. And then we kind of settled in, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, we gave up the early score, but then we get the interception. Mm -hmm. And, you know, later on we get some turnovers. So that was important. And then I, I, as I told you guys, whatever, seven weeks ago, you know, you're up by 21 and you kind of, you sit in there with like 14 minutes in the fourth quarter and, and kind of my mindset was I thought they were going to open up a little bit and throw the ball around and that's probably the biggest thing that I learned is you know with with Kyler when he has the ball in his hands he he's just as dynamic he can run 50 60 yards just as fast as he can throw a football 50 60 yards right. so you know you give up a play on the QB run and then we gave up a play on a screen and next thing you know it's a ball game so I mean there was a lot of good going into it, you know, until we got to that, you know, fourth quarter. And mm -hmm. I think that's something that, that I can learn from. And I said that, you know, getting out of the game that, you know, it's going to be important if we do get another shot at this thing is to, you know, to understand that, you know, he's, he's an unbelievable athlete mm -hmm. that, that can score with his legs too. And yeah. trying to keep things in front of you. Yeah. It's, it's that, almost but that's, a double edge. Yeah, it is. So. I mean, it's, they got two home run threats and, they beat people with explosive plays, and I mean, you guys all know the numbers about you know what they're doing per play. I mean, it's like ridiculous. We might never see it again. So, and that's how they do it: is they can put their you know really fast guys in space to extend plays and, and beat you really, really fast. So, I mean, it's easier said than done keeping the ball in front of you. And, and the one thing too is you know they don't get enough credit for is you know they're averaging like seven yards a pop running the ball. You know, so that that's another thing. I think it's eleven six throwing it and seven running it. So, I mean, that that's amazing what they're doing right now. How much do you think about? You know, you say, okay, well, you had a spy or whatever the game plan was on the fundamental level. How much do you wrestle with? Well, let's just do that again versus well, we need to show them differently. Yeah, it, it's going to be. You know, we have to be uh, different, but we. Um, we can't lose who we are. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, you know, you get to. A certain point during the year where you, you get into a championship game because you have some things that you kind of base out of you know right. our kids know them they know how to execute them really really well mm -hmm. but there's some things from a game plan standpoint that you not with a guy like coach riley i mean you just can't do it you're not going to go out there and, and do certain things the same way you did because they're 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 the top guys i mean he's top top guy in, in the country right. and it comes to game planning and in terms of play calling so if you go out there and you know, uh, and you're throwing stuff out that they're prepping for, mm -hmm. you know, they're, you're you're fishing a barrel. That's the way I look at it. So there's going to be some, there will be some different stuff out there, but you know, to the core, we'll still present the, the base stuff that we do because you know you don't want to trick your own guys either. Right. So there's kind of a happy medium to it. But you know, you go back in this, and we're, when myself and Coach Herman were at Houston, we played them, and then um, you know came back two years ago and played him with Malik in their class and then played him this year and then played him again. So there was a there was a collection of a lot of film of their system versus our system. So you really got to look through it and make sure that you're not a, this is what he likes to do all the time right. because they'll get you. Every, every coach, every, I mean, you know, every defensive coordinator would love to hold an opposing team to zero, right? But do you have to enter a, a game like this knowing like they're going to score points and well we don't talk about it that way i think like I, I we game plan for to do the best job to try to get after people now the reality is with a team like this is it's going to be possessions it's going to be turnovers it's going to be third down those are the things that keeping the ball in front of you those type of deals so i mean it's you, know, you can sit up here and you can say stuff like that but it's to me it's 
It's a bunch of balloons. So how do you avoid any kind of frustration? Because you know they're going to convert on those, some of those things. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's just play the next play. It's kind of like our motto around here, like want to know. Okay, well, I screwed that play up. It's fine. Let, let it go. The biggest thing is not letting people behind us to give up 60-yard touchdowns. You know, they catch a ball for 30 or 40 yards, and it's in front of you and you get them into the tight red zone and you can play well there and give up three points, that's what it's about. But if you give up like boom, 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 shot, shot, and it's 28-7 before you can look up to the scoreboard, it's going to be a tough road. So just we're, we're in the championship game, and like we, you know, we told our guys, I mean, what, what, what do we have to lose? I mean, what do we have to lose? Nothing. Go out there and play free. Go play as hard as you can, and, and we'll see what happens. It seems like. Uh, teams over the past few weeks have been making formations in order to get Anthony Wheeler in space, kind of in coverage. Is there ever a thought to maybe switch Gary and Anthony on those situations where they're kind of attacking that Mac linebacker? Well, at, at times there is, but at times, like, you know, th these guys will do that. They'll, they'll run some plays where they'll try to get him one-on-one, -on -one. but it hasn't been. We, we're, we're pretty multiple on that, and Gary can play off a of three, and, and Wheeler can go insert, so, but me personally, no. We, we if, unless it became a major problem during the game where we can do it. But we don't come in there, and I'm not going to go up to Anthony Wheeler and say, hey, I believe you're going to get beat. Okay, so I'm going to switch them up. And let them play, and if it does happen, and then we'll make the proper adjustments. But, you know, this, like I said, like if people want to ask me, like, what are we going to do? We're we going to do this. And it's like, we're in a championship game, all right? We're not going to wholesale change everything that we're doing. You know, our kids will look at us like we're crazy. Do we have to have some new wrinkles? Do we have to do some different stuff? Yeah, but not overboard, because the last thing we want to do is not get our kids lined up and for them to play slow. And let them go, let them go play fast. And, you know, the one thing I've learned around here, especially from last year, was these games take on, you know, their own, their own deal, man. I mean, it's like I came in here and we weren't playing really, really well when we played these guys two years ago. And it's like, um, you know, two neighborhoods getting together and wanting to fight. It's like, you just kind of stay out of the way. And it's like, mm -hmm. they're in their kind of own element, you know, and that, that was different for me because, you know, not knowing how hard of a, you know, how, how this rivalry is. So there's a lot of that. Forget about scheme, forget about scheme. It's like, I'm, you know, these two guys are battling it out and let them go and just try not to slow our guys down. I want them to go as hard as they can. And we can only, only, only you can do so much, you know, when you get to this point. I mean, you, you've, you are who you are at this point. Brandon uh, Jones is your dude. Yeah. So how important is he to this game? Very. And how's he looking to you? I, I, we'll find out, you know, and that's probably a Herm question later on down the week. But, you know, um, we need him. You know, we need him. This is a space game, and he's a great tackler. And, you know, we'll see what happens in the next couple of days. You, you hit those guys up, but uh, you, he's, you may hit it on the head. He's super important to us. Todd, compared to the first game, uh, you didn't have Roach available. Yeah. You've also been using Osai and, yeah. and Jeff Moore the last couple of weeks. Yeah. With those three guys, specifically bigger body guys, what are the advantages of being able to use their versatility? And so yeah, it's, it, you yeah it's big. I mean, Malcolm especially, you know, Malcolm, you know, two years ago, play very well versus these guys and you know one thing about Malk being out is you know he doesn't have a lot of wear and tear on his body too so you know he's he's out there he's to me as close to 100 percent as possible he's a dynamic pass rusher but he's that hybrid guy that you can put on the tight end that's like really really strong and really hard to move off the ball so and then Joseph and Jeff are you know I, t I talked to you guys about Joseph you know just the way he was practicing you know, he got a lot of reps last week, and, you know, he's still young and still learning, but there's going to be a huge upside with him. And, you know, Jeff did a great job for us, you know, uh, getting in there and, to me, making the, the play of the game on the pick. And so it's good to have those guys available because we're going to need them. They're going to go, you know, they're probably 70, 73 plays, somewhere around there. That's what we anticipate, and you're going to have to rotate guys in, especially – with the emotion of this game and, you know, how much running we're going to have to do, we're going to have to get those guys in early. I know you're not much of a touchy-feely guy, but Brecken Hager growing out his hair for three years. Yeah. I mean, do you see, sense the guys rallying around this or yeah, what? Not no, not really. I think it's – What's your take on it as him, a guy who has a nice, him, clean buzz cut? Him, him rallying around himself, maybe. <laughs> so, but, you know, it's, it's Brecken. Come on. It's him. So, but it's – I just think about all the stuff that those guys like him and Chris and, Ch and Charles and 
I just think about all the stuff that they've gone through, and I just told them, I said, hey, hey let's be in the moment. Like, we're up in practice field. Like, listen, fellas, this is, let's not let this pass by, like, how hard we have to work to, you know, try to win this ball game. And I'll tell them, I'll remind them again on Friday night, and I'll remind them before we leave the leave, get out of the locker room. Let it all out, man. Let's go. I mean, what, what can possibly happen outside of having regret? Let's have zero regret after this game. You can look back at it, win or lose, and say to yourself, man, I gave everything because I, I promise you that, you know, you get into these spots and, and, you, and you let it pass by. You don't really embrace it. I want those guys to really embrace what they have accomplished to get to this point. And then I want them to push all in. It says, here, this is it. Everything we got. Speaking of, speaking, speaking of defensive linemen, uh, you know, for Charles, the Big 12 defensive yeah. lineman of the year, um, I don't know if that, that I mean, obviously that speaks to him, but that speaks to Oscar you yeah. know, for two years in a row. Yeah. Now. What, what, what is just your overall take of what you've got going at defensive tackle and maybe well, how that well, can I help think it, I, for the future? I think if there's anybody in this building, and I can speak defensively, that has has as good a relationship with their players, it's, it's OG. You know what I'm saying? So um, he's a father figure. He's a friend. He can get up and down your butt when you, you know, and, and love you up. So I think when they go in that room and they, and I just look at coaches around the country and say, you know, how hard do those guys play for their coach? And I, and I just, I think that's a really good compliment to him. And then Charles himself, because, yeah. you know, there, there was some moments, you know, earlier in the year where it's like frustration about not getting, you know, whatever sacks, DFLs, right. and for him to come back and, you know, and and to to get the accomplish, to make the accomplishments that he's doing. But for us personally mm -hmm. to be in a championship game with that is, is pretty special. So, you know, OG does a great job with those guys, and those guys give him everything they have, and it, and it's yeah. really neat to have him and Puna. You know, get them back to back. Mm -hmm. But how nice is it? I know coaching fraternities are pretty small. With Coach uh, Jake uh, Spavita taking over at Texas State. You know, oh, you did, take, he did get it. Yes, sir. Okay. Just well, good for facing him at West Virginia. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, he's he's a heck of a ball coach. You know what I mean? And it's, uh, you know, what a crazy game that was too when they played OU. So it's, uh, you know, congratulate him. That's what I would do because you know you get to this point in your career, you know, especially. You know, when you have a, a really good quarterback and you want to run your own your own show. So I, I don't know him personally, but, you know, I know him, his brothers, and, you know, from other people too. So that's that's a heck of a deal for him. I'm happy for him. How amped does Herman get? In for, terms of? Like, either during practice or, like, right before the team goes out to the field for? Uh, in practice, it's more of, you know, the, kind of the culture coach, you know, I, I think he does an outstanding job, you know, because sometimes you get on these runs and you kind of let things slide and it's like, is that really important that a guy goes two yards past the line? And he's been unbelievably consistent with staying on guys and staying in routine. And this is the reason why we're at this point right now. So he does that in practice. And then in the, the, the pregame stuff I miss because I, I kind of roll out to the field early, but I'm, I'm from knowing him, I'm, I'm sure it's pretty, pretty cranky. Because they talk about your halftime and pregame. Yeah, players want to sell tickets to this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, cause it, but it, it's important. I mean, to me, it's important to to have a, a message. So I, what I try to do is, I, hey, this is what we have to do to win the game, and you know, this message will be will be simple. Is just uh, let's let's push it all in, man. Let's 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 go. Let's have zero regrets off of this thing and see how it shakes out. You having fun? So far. <laughs> I, I su I'm assuming either Sunday or Saturday you watched the uh, film of the previous matchup of OU, mm -hmm. right? And I watched a little bit of it today, and it was funny just how fresh the guys look, you know, six games ago. And, yeah. And, uh, I, you know, with, with, your, with your scheme and all that, um, as a coach, do you just – you can't roll out the same thing. Obviously. Right. So how do you balance? Well, this is what worked, but we need to show them something new. Yeah. How do you balance all that? First of all, they're they're a little bit different, you know, when they made the change. So, you know, there's some different tendencies that, you know, the different coordinators might have in terms of pressure or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of go back through and take a look at what we did to have success. Um, maybe more for the individual matchups mm -hmm. 
Um, but you still got to go back and game plan what you're seeing on tape and what they're doing right now. So it is different. Mm -hmm. The the difference is with Ruffin, a little more four man front. I mean, what are the primary differences you're seeing? Some, yeah. I don't want to get into too much detail on that, <laughs> but but there are some differences, yeah. All right. But this game though, with Sam's shoulder, I mean, he had you guys had no worries running him off the edge. And quarter of power or, wa or wide. I mean, I don't know if y'all want to go that much run game in this time around, and that would change things. Um, you know, I all I can tell you is there's no next game right now. So right. this is whatever we got to do. What's your sense of the guys in the moment? And I'm very excited. Uh, I've had great practices, man. Energy's high, as you would expect. Um, a lot of confidence. Right now, but uh, you know we got to we got to execute. We got to protect the football, and we got to execute. So when we can do those two things. We're going to have a chance. Did you know that you had an all-conference fullback on your hands and you had your back? Uh, so not that's, what, that's what they classified him as today. Yeah, I I didn't know that till now. Uh, congratulations, to Andrew, for that. But uh, yeah, he's deserved it. He's had a great year for us. I'm really happy for him. Did you, did you see any of the rest of the? First team or second I have, team? I have not. Uh, uh, well, if I told you LJ didn't make first or second team as receiver, would that surprise you at all? Yeah, but, you know, it's a league full of guys. And, you know, I, I, I wouldn't trade our guys. I love our guys. I think that they, uh, they're the best. So I think our staff feels the same way. Our players feel the same way. And, you know, we just got to go out and, and like we've done since the day we've been here, we just got to go out there and take care of business and do it play within our system, do what we need to do, and prove us right. Tim, Trey, Trey and Keontae both play pretty well in the first game against yeah. you, and it seems like every week it's, it's one or the other stepping up and having a big game. What are the kind of the differences or the advantages of instead of having like a true bell cow, you've got two capable guys that, that you trust back Keeps them healthy, number one, right? Um, so they're they're allowed to have the durability that they've had in terms of us being able to count on both of them every single week, and obviously, um, you could tell some some games one guy's kind of got a hot hand, the other game the other guy does, and Coach Drayton does a fabulous job of getting that feel and knowing like, hey, I, I like this guy running this play because he's seen it really good tonight, and I think those two guys are. Um, they work great together. They're like, they're like brothers, you know, and they, they help each other. They feed off each other. They're excited when the other guy does well. Um, and that's a big part of it, too. There's no bitterness. There's no, why aren't I playing? And uh, it's why I think also both their development and their growth and their success is equated on the field. You kind of took my follow up, but well, with Stan, how much of a credit is it to him where you've got to kind of feel it out and figure out yeah. okay, which of these guys is A exciting. lot. I mean, that's he does a great job, and that's why he's the best running back coach in the country. In terms of the uh, the offensive line and how yeah. they've come along, what uh, where would you say they are in terms of season performance? And you know they're playing really physical right now. Um, been really pleased to see a lot more moving moving people off the ball. Um, and they've really developed, I think, over the course of the year. Their confidence, uh, communication. Nick Herb again did it has done just a fabulous job with those guys and and credit goes to those guys they they they, they battle every day they play every day and you know we're out there banging around and there, there's no there's not a lot of walkthroughs in this program so they go out there and hit and continue to work and get better and it's showing you know it's definitely showing Sam is seen as a an emotional leader mm -hmm. um, he obviously had unbelievable poise in this game the last go around right do you even have to worry about him getting too amped or yeah I do I'll have to worry about him being too amped and he's just gotta you know and that'll come as you get closer to the game those conversations right now it's all about prep it's all about fronts and coverage and our our offense and what we need to do and how we need to execute right now but eventually we'll have that we'll have that talk you guys as coaches know um, what a big opportunity this is. And mm -hmm. you know, the players may think, oh, this will happen every year, yeah. right? But uh, how, do you, how do you stress to them the importance of this moment, but you know, not, too, not put any pressure on them? Or? It's weird because you don't. I mean, 
you know, if you stay to the foundation of the things that we believe in and what Coach has talked about since day one, what matters right now to them mm -hmm. is they better be in the cold tanks and then they better go eat. Right. Like, that's that's it. Don't worry about the game. Right now it's 1-0 and mentality, which is what are you doing right now and what do you have to do next? So practice is over. It's treatment. It's getting the cold tubs. It's get over to eat. Get the study hall, like, in that order. And that's what they worry about. And to, to harp on how big of a game it is, we don't need to tell them that. They know. Right. Our thing is just do what we do. That's it. That's all we got to do. Do what we do. Mm -hmm. Be prepared. You know, prep your body, your mind. Get yourself ready to go out and compete at a really high level and play really fast and let it loose. And what happens, happens. That's it. That's all as, you can do. As coaches – same. Get, getting to play the under underdog card, even though you've beaten them once, is that something you can sell? We don't even talk about that. I mean, we don't even talk about those things. It's it's again. It's what you see on that coverage, Sam. What route is he going to do? Should you put the protection here? Like we don't. We're not worried about the outside noise. We're kind of worried about what we have to do to win the game and what we have to do to execute at a really high level and protect the football. That's it. And everything that we do funnels towards that. And as long as we can stay focused and driven in that mentality, we're going to have a really good chance on Saturday. Going back to Sam, just what, what is that process like on a game day, especially a game of, of this you know, magnitude, to make sure that he's in the right state of mind? You mean the process for him personally or, or just what? just you helping him like, make sure he's not too amped? Like just pl saying. play within the system. I, mean, I constantly remind him that he's good enough just playing the Sam Ellinger and playing with passion and the love for his teammates and having fun and enjoy it because it's going to be a blast. This is a, a fun thing for young kids to be involved in. They need to enjoy it.